What's going on, everybody? Welcome to an episode of Sports Cards Live Recorded. Because this isn't live, this is recorded. It's Tuesday, May the 28th, and I'm going to go over some of the cards from my eBay watch list, completed items, items that have been completed, and share with you why was I watching them? Was I going to buy them? Was I just curious about them? Maybe a bit about the cards as well, what I know about them, and a few other you know random opinions. I hope you guys enjoy this. Let me know down below if you do, if you'd like me to do this on a monthly basis or something like that. Once the, once the watch list builds up enough completed items, maybe I can do another one of these episodes and just let you know what I'm thinking and what I'm watching on my own personal eBay watch list. Let's get into it and remind everybody Sports Cards Live every almost every Saturday night is also available on podcast wherever you get your podcast. Check it out. Please subscribe, leave a review, and of course, subscribe to the YouTube channel. All right, let's get into the eBay watch list completed items. We're going to start, guys, with a trio of Sidney Crosby 0506 Young Guns, the first of the trio. All three selling on the same day. The first one is this BGS 9.5 True Gem. All four subs are 95s. Sells for $1,403. That's a good price, guys. I see value in this card at that price. Why? Well, have a look at this. Also, on the same day, a PSA 10, also a gem mint grade. Sells for $2,551. That is about 1100 more than it's than the same card at at 1403 PSA 10 we don't know what the subgrades are we just know it's a we just know it's a gem mint card sells for 2551 all right now the same day a BGS black label pristine sells for $20,100 $20,100 for a card that is basically the exact same as the other two we just looked at at this point, you're not buying the card. Whoever bought this and bid on the bid this up to 20 grand, you you guys, you don't care about the card. You care about the black label. It, it, it blows my mind that people would give this particular copy, you know, about eight times the value as this copy, and about 12 times or so, 13 times the value as this copy. It's 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 out of hand. Uh, it's a very expensive piece of black foil that someone just just attributed. Basically, the difference between twenty thousand one hundred and fourteen oh three, so about nineteen and a half thousand dollars. Somebody paid for the black label itself, not the card, the black label. It's it's funny. It's funny. It's ridiculous. Uh, monumental waste of money, right there, in my opinion. All right, but let's let's leave it. Let's keep going. Here's a beautiful card, not a monumental waste of money. You're getting game used Wayne Gretzky All Star memorabilia, where you can actually look at the card, look at the patch, and find where it came from on the jersey itself. Gorgeous on card auto, 25 copies produced. They don't all have a star like this one does. I think this is probably the best copy there. It's a PSA 9 mint condition card. Beautiful. I was watching this because I was considering making a bid. But it got out of reach for me, so I had to pass and watch someone else pick it up, and congratulations to them. Whereas I was watching these Crosbys because I knew I'd get a laugh out of what the Black Label sold for, and boy, did I. That's just that's good hobby comedy right there. All right, a couple All-Star Royalties. Now, this is an interesting set because it's a one and done. Upper Deck made it in 07. They didn't make it again. That's really cool. And they're 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 chased by a few collectors, hardcore series collectors. This was won by a friend of mine, Mitch Grotman. He posted it on his Instagram. This is a grail for him, an important card. These were numbered to the amount of all-star games the players had played in when these came out. At the point, at this point in time, Ovi had only played in one all-star game. He's played in many more since then. Really cool. I like that it's one and done, the set itself, but take nothing away from emblems of endorsement, limited logos, honorable numbers. You know, foundation sets that come out year after year. I love the ability to collect those cards year over year and build your honorable numbers collection of your player, that sort of thing. But these one and done sets are also really cool. $5,108 for the Ovechkin. A Gordy Howe and a Mario Lemieux were also listed, but were ended uh, early by the seller, MC Sports Cards. Likely they sold them at a card show or something like that. But in any event, I was watching these to see what they would do. And I'm wondering if perhaps. Uh, Mitch bought those as well, but Mitch bought this one from MC at auction, and I know that uh, he has it in hand. 
great cards over there. Okay, guys, let's have a look at a couple of Star Quest Golds. These are from 98 Upper Deck Choice. This was a very low end product when it came out. Uh, you know, packs were a buck type of thing. A lot of junk cards came out, but these gold Star Quests were hidden treasures within this release. And the Yager, one of the best cards you can get from that insert set, along with Gretzky. You know, this is it's cool. These are inserts, but they're also parallels because these Star Quest Golds also come in blue, red, and green. Those mm -hmm. ones aren't numbered. I believe the odds are the same for those colors. Golds are out of a hundred and uh really condition sensitive. This is a mint condition copy. The centering is beautiful. I think it's a great card. I was watching it because I was thinking about making a play. Got out of reach for me, sold for 4418 by channel partner Slab Sharks. And here's the Gretzky Star Quest Gold, near mint to mint eight. This one sold for 12,445 on 92 bids, but must not have been paid for because it was relisted and sold two weeks later for 8,300. A more realistic number here at 8,300 Canadian or 6,087 USD. This is a true 90s Gretzky Grail, a top three type of 90s grails for Gretzky. Congrats to the new owner. Was watching it. I knew it would get out of my reach, but I, you never know, I guess. Well, I knew. I knew. <laughs> but anyway, I want to see what it sold for. $8,300. I was watching this 1911 C55 George Vezina rookie. It's a PSA 5. I watched it because, well, I own a copy also in a PSA 5 holder. So I wanted to see where the market was at. And it's just, it's a great card. This is the grail for vintage hockey collectors, Hall of Fame hockey rookie collectors, pre-war collectors. This is hockey's pre-war grail. All the way from 1910 up until really the release of 1951 Parkhurst. I know who the seller was on this. I think he was satisfied with the sale. And uh, again, a beautiful copy. I was just curious to see what it would sell for. In recent weeks, guys, I've noticed a plethora of the cup tribute rpas rookie patch autos being sold on ebay by a few different sellers this was the wayne gretzky the 09 it came it came out in 2009 the cup 10 copies produced i love the auto the patch is amazing it's a psa 9 sells for twenty thousand one hundred dollars. i wanted to buy this card and i was willing to bid you know up to about 40 percent of what it sold for i obviously did not win it I know who did. I'm happy for my my friend who who did purchase this card, Mr. Fosh on Instagram. And uh, you know, the one thing about these though, and I do have several tributes from this set, other players. The one thing about this is that you know, it's an RPA. It's a rookie patch auto tribute. He wasn't a rookie with the LA Kings. He was a rookie with the Edmonton Oilers. And I kind of wish that Upper Deck would have, you know, made it an Oiler card. I'm sure there were reasons why they couldn't. Maybe they were out of memorabilia, something like that. But in any event, it's not enough to keep me from wanting to own the card. I just wish that the accuracy of the, that there was consistency and accuracy within the card itself, but still an amazing piece. 20,100. We also saw a Gordy Howe sell for $2,221 in a PSA 10 holder. Great card. No patch, no vintage Red Wing Gordy Howe patch in here, but still a really cool tribute to the 0506 set. And it's the Gordie Howe. The Michael Jordan sells for $45.50. I was watching this out of curiosity. Wasn't going to bid on it. But it's it's still a great card. It's not, you know, it would have sold for a lot more if it was Bulls. It's North Carolina. So it does under five grand. If this was Bulls, I don't know what it would have done. I think it would have done well over $25,000 if it was a Bulls card. Marc-Andre Fleury sells for $754. I would have liked to have bought this one. I was willing to bid up to about 400 uh it, it almost doubled that so i was out but a great card and uh, at least he was a rookie with the pittsburgh penguins the mark messier again he was a rookie with the oilers but this is just a great card he's a legend for the oilers also was a legend with the rangers i did not i i wanted it i wanted to get this i would have bid up to about 400 i think i did bid around 400 on this card didn't win it uh great patch great auto and I'm still on the lookout for one of these for my collection. Eric Stahl, PSA 10, great three-color patch. This sells for a paltry $127. Um, I wanted to buy this card. I think I forgot to bid because there's no other reason why I didn't win this card or at least bid it up a little bit. My buddy Stammer won it. Congratulations to him. I'm glad he has it. And um, I might be on the lookout for another copy. We'll see. But that was on the watch list as well. As this Tiger Woods, guys, look what this sold for. The Tiger Woods with a Nike swoosh patch on card auto, PSA 9, sells for 
I knew this would get out of my range, well out of my range. I was watching it out of curiosity. Wanted to see where the market was at and what it would sell for. Love the card. Bobby Orr sells for eleven twenty-five. Would have been great to pair this one up with the with the Gordy Howe from right here. Could have done the pair for under thirty-five hundred dollars. And um, you know, I was again watching the Orr out of curiosity. It's not a card that I was really wanting to buy, but you never know. I might change my mind in the future and pursue a copy. Here's another tribute, but this is back to the eleven twelve set. Cup 1112. This came out in 1819. Connor McDavid. Upper Deck has now taken Connor McDavid, his image, his memorabilia, his autograph, and applied it to basically every previous design for Cup RPAs, including this one, which is back to 1112. Great looking card. I was watching this out of curiosity. Wasn't really planning to buy it. I already own one of these. I have the 1415 tribute, I believe it is. This one sold for 3173 USD or about 23 and a quarter. Uh, sorry, 3173 Canadian or about 23 and a quarter USD. Great card. It's raw. Might have sold for more if it was graded. I'm not sure, but um, really, really just a lovely card that I was watching to see where the market was at. Now, this one I would have loved to have been able to buy, guys. 2015 Upper Deck Premier Wayne Gretzky auto patch with an all star. He's in that same all star jersey we saw earlier in the Premier. This is the cup. Beautiful all star patch i love the symmetry of that patch nice three color piece just a this card just this card just works it just works i don't care if it's a seven eight nine or ten probably would have bid the same amount if i was in the running but sells for three thousand five fifty by mc sports cards great card i'd love to own one of those one day here's a cool gretzky mcdavid a dual auto from chronology numbered out of 25 on card autos i love the design here the players are kind of looking at each other you've got you got legend of the past, legend of the of, of the of the modern day here, Gretzky and McDavid. It sells for six thousand eight eighty nine. And again, here's a I, I wasn't going to buy this card. It's not a card that I really want. I, don't get me wrong; I take it for the right price, but uh, it doesn't fit into my collection. But I wanted to gauge where the market was at on dual autos of McDavid and Gretzky, and this is a good indicator here. There aren't a lot of them, so when one comes up, you need to you know maybe follow to, to get an idea. All right, Connor McDavid, 2019 honorable numbers. Now, there's a few reasons why I was watching this card. Number one, it's a beautiful card. Number two, it's cup. Number three, it's numbered out of seven. Honorable numbers are usually numbered to the player's jersey number, which in his case would be 97. Only seven or 90 fewer opportunities to buy this card. And both patches are three color. It's also game use patches, not rookie year, you know, photo shoot. To me, I'd rather own this than a rookie year photo shoot patch card. This is Gamey's patches, so really great card. Uh, I knew it would get out of my reach at 3,947 Canadian or about 2,900 USD, uh, but I may try to get a copy down the road. We'll see. Great card. Was watching this one on Slab Sharks. Here's a Solani 2014 base patch auto parallel or, or variant numbered out of three. My favorite all-time player. I like how the red foil matches the red ink. I'm not sure where this patch is from. Maybe the words Anaheim above the Ducks logo uh, on the front of the jersey. Great looking card. Sold for 504. I maybe I don't. Maybe I regret not buying that one. I'm not sure. Don't know if I could have even got it for what I would have bid. But maybe we'll watch for another copy. Maybe not. I don't have any red cards like red foil uh, from the cup in my collection at this time, but I was watching it cause he's my guy and I might've made a play. You know, I kind of leave some of those. I kind of decided the very last minute if I'm going to bid on cards and this one, I, I just, I just balked on. All right, guys, this is a card that uh, I owned a copy of this one briefly at the November Toronto expo. I bought a copy. I think I sold it the next day to my buddy because I bought some other things and wanted to recover the the cash outlay, but it's a 0506 first year at Cup honorable numbers. Patrick Waugh. I love how the one patch does have three colors. That little bit of blue is really a saver, a card saver, if you will. Saves the whole thing to me. Uh, that little bit of blue, two colors on this side. Beautiful autograph. He kept it within the autograph area. 33 copies produced, sells for a thousand Canadian, which I believe is exactly what I bought and sold the copy I owned uh, back in November. So I was watching it to see where the card was at, and I might pursue a copy of that later. This next copy, this next card, I say really cool. We don't often see Peter Bondra patch autos in the hobby. There are not a lot of them out there. Peter Bondra was one of the greatest goal scorers of his era. He played throughout the 90s. I love these, this, these vintage 
auto patches, if we can say. I mean, this is from the beginning of auto patches, 0102, SP game used, great auto, beautiful three-color patch, and I would love to add a Peter Bondra patch auto to my collection. This would have been the one, but I I you know, I was think I was in up to about two hundred dollars, sells for three eighty five US. I've been on the lookout for a Tito six Ty Cobb red portrait card for a while. I've yet to pull the trigger. I was thinking this might have been the one. An SGC two polar bear back. Ever since having CRT sports cards on my on sports cards live on Saturday night a month or two ago, I've been really looking at these polar bear backs. And uh, they do sell for premiums over, you know, Sweet Caps or Piedmonts, but a really nice card. Look, it looks beautiful for a two from here. Sells for 5501 Canadian. I just didn't have that kind of money to spend at the time. So I'm going to keep on watching for a Ty Cobb red portrait. And if it happens to have a polar bear back, that would be a wonderful bonus. A couple of one-on-ones from Upper Deck Splendor that I was watching. These I was just watching. I was curious. I, I watch a lot of cards because I'm just curious what they're going to sell for. Not intending to bid ever. I just want to see what they do. And then you get, oftentimes, if I'm watching, you know, buy it nows, people, the sellers will send you offers. And I kind of feel bad because I'm not going to, you know, unless they slash their price, I'm not really interested. But in any event, I was watching this out of curiosity. The 101 Splendor Silver Sticks, that's actually a piece of silver in the shape of a stick embedded in the card right there. It sells for $9.50. Uh, seems pretty reasonable, actually, to me for a Patrick Wall 101 from a high-end brand like Splendor. I own the Dale Howard Check 101 from the set. And uh, love the card. I was also watching this Connor McDavid 101. Look, there's no auto on here. There's some great gold hollow foil. And then you got this piece of memorabilia. I'm not sure what it is, but there's an, if you can see, there's a discreet Oilers logo right there. It says Oilers up over there. Not sure what it is, but again, $1,425 Canadian or about a 1050 USD for this 101 McDavid from Splendor. Seems like, it seems reasonable to me. It's a, it's a nice card. You know, missing an auto and the, the memorabilia isn't popping with color, but still a pretty cool card. I was curious what it was going to sell for, and that was fourteen twenty five. Now, this last card here, guys, or is this the second last one? Second last card is a 2023 Opeachy Premier Diamond Rainbow Connor McDavid, numbered out of 75. Now, it sold for 1050 Canadian. Guys, a, a PSA 10 young gun of his sells for more than 1050 Canadian at least right now. And to me, this is out of 75. I'd say it's a nicer card. And I just love these Premier Diamond Rainbows. This is the second year they made them. The the first year they were numbered out of 100, I think, 100 or 99. I think it was 100. And uh, I do want to own this card. I didn't buy this one. I'm hoping to find another one at some point. Hopefully me profiling it here doesn't run up the cost on myself. But this is a card I do want to own. And hopefully I will one day. Great card. I just didn't pull the trigger on it. The other day here when it sold on May the 26th, which is two days ago. And the final card is this Alex Ovechkin Fleer Ultra Medallions Gold. This is card number 200 to 200. I thought that was pretty cool. It's a PSA 7, which is a low grade for an ultra modern card like this. But it sells for 15 bucks. You can't grade for 15 bucks. And I thought it was pretty neat. You know, these Fleer, Fleer Ultra was an EPAC exclusive brand. And I think that hurts it on the secondary market. People don't know about us. So they're not really sure what it is, but maybe that will prove to be a, you know, an opportunity down the road. And again, I, I forgot to bid. I would have bought this. I would have bid this up to probably 35, 40 bucks if I was on the ball, but I wasn't. So I didn't get the card, but uh, sold on ComC auctions. Cool card. I didn't win it, but I was intending to. And I think 200 to 200 is pretty cool. Lots of different parallel medallions from this brand from Fleer Ultra. So check it out, EPAC exclusive. You can buy the find them on Com C2. But anyway, guys, that's that is my watch list ended items here for the month of May, going back into a few from April. I'll try to do this again. Let me know down below in the comments if you enjoy this. If it's something you'd like me to continue to do, I'll wait until I have enough buildup of items in my eBay completed watch list and uh, or end it, I should say. And then I'll do another one. Who knows how long it'll take? Maybe a couple of weeks, maybe a month. But let me know if you liked it down in the comments, if you have any questions. And um, that's it. Check out Sports Cards Live, guys. Coming up with another episode this Saturday with Mark Sadov from Fund Your Cards. And we're going to be on Friday night. We're having the 90s auctions showcase for their auction that does end on June the 3rd. That's going to be this Friday, everyone. So please check that out. We're going to have another episode of the PWCC Weekly Hockey on Sunday with Josh Madigan. And 
Check out Sports Cards Live on wherever you find your podcasts. You can find them on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. You can feel free to download those, subscribe, and all that. Appreciate you all. Again, let me know if you enjoyed this. And with that, this episode of Sports Cards Live recorded is over.